Good morning. It's Ned Milburn here. I'm a guitar builder and repairman in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And today on the bench you can see, for those who know electric guitars, this is a disembodied Stratocaster neck. And the neck, the, the client says the, the frets are fretting out above the 12th fret. <clears throat> so I'll be working on that. And another thing is, I've identified that there are some high frets that are causing some slight buzzing in many spots. Now, when I first learned how to do fret dressing, which means you level it, you radius it, you recrown it, you polish the frets. Okay. Um, when I first learned to do fret dressing, we just took a block and we went over the whole thing, and I didn't identify each individual fret that was causing an issue. Nowadays I'm much more methodical and scientific about it. Uh, I suppose you could say scientific. And I'll show you what I've done here. Um, hopefully we can see it with the reflection. There we go. There's... I better bring over a lamp. There we can see a, an X that I've penciled onto the fingerboard. And everywhere you see the X's, there's some X's, it's not coming out well in this light, it came out well in a different light, there we go, X's there, and more X's, it's a shame this light isn't doing so well for it, there we go, maybe that's better. Um, Okay, there you can see now a whole bunch of X's that I've marked on the fingerboard. And I will be focusing on those portions of the neck as I'm doing the work. So this allows me to be more efficient with my time and more effective with the actual job. And then I can take away just as much as is needed to get the frets sorted out properly. The first fret I have an X marked here. It's, I made a fairly big X indicating that there's a fairly significant um, deviation. I'm going to follow the radius. When I do it this method I usually just follow the radius and then this next fret is fine. Next I have here at the bass side and at the treble side, so the E string and the B string and the low E string. And the sandpaper that I put on this sanding block is, uh, I believe it was 150 or 180, 180. and uh, it gets worn down, so it gets weaker the more you use it, especially when you use sandpaper on metal. There's some X's here near the A string and the D string. And I'm just going lightly to start. Some X's here. And some more X's all along this fret here and here actually. And then I have some here. And I'm just going fairly lightly with the block here because if I push down too hard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flex the neck and I can create some unwanted results because the neck, instead of being straight, I've got it adjusted straight. Quite often, if the truss rod is adjusted fine, when you take the string tension off, the neck will, without the string tension on, the neck pulls back to a flat position. So it's good to check it. Uh, every time when you take the strings off because depending upon what strings are being used and depending upon the neck and the stiffness of the neck it can create a uh, different um, different bow that's unwanted. Now where was it? I think it was right about here. So again I'm going fairly lightly and I'm just right now all I'm trying to do is address these problem spots.
and I'm working on the front tip of the block. And there's some residual light sanding that's going on on the rest of the block. But I'm not pushing very hard, so it's not taking much meat away from the frets at all. Again, one of the keys is we want to take away as little meat from the fret as is necessary to get a proper leveling and radiusing on the frets. Now, this is the area where it's fretting out some more. So, one thing that you should understand about necks is if you have a consistent radius all the way along the neck, since the neck tapers and it's wider side to side here, your neck will necessarily fret out on frets up at this area um, when you're bending uh, if you have a consistent radius all the way across. That's why a quote-unquote compound radius where you have a tighter radius here and a lower radius here, that's important. The way when I craft my own necks, I don't worry about the radius. What I do is I do a deviation. So I start with a flat neck and I measure in approximately 0.8 of a millimeter and I put a line along the edge. Then I do the same thing along the other edge. I draw a line down the middle and I sand the neck and I round it to that 0.8 millimeter point. That will necessarily create the perfect compound radius that I need. So then we avoid fretting out. And warm-off necks, I know one of my clients a few years ago brought me a Stratocaster with a warm-off neck and he said he just put this new neck on. They make good necks, yes, but it had a consistent radius and it was a fairly strong radius and he couldn't do anything on it without it fretting out if he was bending notes. He was playing in the Halifax Jazz Festival the next day and so I did a rush job for him and uh, basically what I had to do is I had to take out some meat in the center of the frets to create a compound radius. So on this guitar I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to take away some from this area and that should help it from fretting out. You notice I started going kind of diagonally but going along with the radius and now that I've worked it a little bit I'm going to go straight. I have more of my weight now on the uh, palm side rather than the finger side of my hand and that, that's because I want to work towards the end of the frets. Okay, there we go and that should be pretty good. You might be able to see there's uh, sanding dust here. Okay, you can see the dust so you can see where it's being worked more and less. Um, so next thing, I just want to a little bit more and go along here. Okay, that's looking fair for me. Next thing, I'm going to go start at the first fret, and I'm going to slightly diagonally, I'm going to work along each single fret until I just kiss the surface of each fret and working the radius. This time I've got my pressure along here so I'm blending, always blending the preceding fret into the subsequent frets. Sometimes you can feel and hear things happening. For example, if you've got a really high fret, if you're going this way, you'll hear a bump, bump, bump as it's catching the height of that fret.
then it's interesting. We see some interesting results. Uh, it may be difficult to show with this camera, with this lighting, but I'll attempt to show it to you. Uh, this fret, for example, and this fret, right along the E string area, along the edge of the fingerboard, there's very little uh, of the top edge, top surface of the fret that is filed down. Whereas we come to this fret and these other frets, and there's more, and this one as well, there's more surface of the fret filed down, which means that these two frets in particular at the ends near the edge of the fingerboard, they were lower than the other frets. So that's one thing that we, we, we want to watch and see the results. If we look carefully, we can see what's happening with the frets. We can see how they were and how they are now, and then they all should be pretty consistent. The last thing I will do before I finish this stage is we'll vacuum it. It's always a good idea to clean as you go. And then I will go through that same process. I'll go every fret and I will either go three spots, so side, middle, side, or I go four spots, side, almost middle, almost middle, and there we go. And if I notice any discrepancy, then I'll go, you know, five or six spots on each fret just to check it out. And if I check out, there's one of my spots, there's no rocking now where there was an X. Here was another X. There's a slight, slight rocking there just at the edge of the fingerboard, so I'm going to touch that up before I finish this stage. That one's fine. This one's fine. And this one's fine. Here's some more. Okay. So you see how I do that? I'm going to go through every single point that I marked before, as well as I will review the whole fingerboard one more time before I finish this section of the uh, fret dressing, which is called the leveling, leveling and radiusing, okay, it's uh, kind of two, two steps blended together. We level them, we radius them, and after I'm confident that these are all nice and level, then I go to the fret crowning stage where I recrown the frets, because what I've basically done is I have now had the mushroom top of the fret and I chopped off the top so when I re-level it, or sorry, when I recrown it I've got to take away the shoulders and make sure that I have a nice round fret surface on the final fret. That was a terrible drawing, it was freehand held in the air. That's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions please comment in the comment box below. You guys know how to do it if you're watching YouTube. Um, and you can also put in the comments what other sorts of things you would like to see me show you. That's uh, guitar tech or guitar maintenance or guitar luthier type of operations. I also do guitar building, so if you have any building questions, please feel free to ask them below, and I'll try and show you some videos of it. I do have at least one or one other video, but I think there's a couple other videos showing a little bit about recrowning the frets, and I'll see if I can get a recrowning video going uh, once I work on the recrowning on this guitar as well. Okay, that's it. Uh, subscribe if you wouldn't mind, that helps out and helps share the video with more people who might be interested in guitar maintenance, whether they're trying to do it for themselves or whether they're uh, still pros or semi-pro, amateur or learning, developing. Um, or if you're just a guitar owner who's interested in finding out what luthiers or guitar techs do when they're getting their guitar frets done. Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching.